Uh, as I make a few announcements to you, if you take that friendship book that's on the inside of the aisles and pass it down the row, that would be helpful to us. And we'd love to know that you are here. Be ashamed for you not to get credit. So, sign up. Mary Smith, you need to know, is at Jewish Hospital. We want to keep Mary in our prayers. We also want to keep Lynn Cole in our prayers. Lynn's uh, Aunt Janet. If I get that right. I hope I got that right. Aunt Janet is in um, hospice care, and Lynn and Adrian have gone down there, and uh, it, it looks like she's not going to make it. So they want, they're down there with her now. So we want to keep Lynn in our prayers and her family. Also need to tell you that, that we are want to welcome the Reverend Ron Robinson, who's going to be preaching for us this morning to spare you from me. And so, see how, what a good day it is. Aren't you glad you signed in? Okay. And uh, also tell you that there's going to be a reception following the service in the living room, and you're invited to stop by there. There's some good food in there. If you'd like to partake of it, we'd love to have you do that. Need to tell you that uh, Tim Baker, our wonderful organist is going to be playing a concert on Thursday, March 5th at 7.30 at St. James Catholic Church. And I think this is free to Presbyterians, isn't it, Tim? <laughs> Only to Presbyterians. Everyone else re is required to bring indulgences or something. I'm not sure. Anyway, so, no, that's at St. James at 7.30. Also tell you that the St. Patrick's Day T is on Thursday, March 12th from 2 until 4, and you're invited to that. Uh, that will be in Elan Hall, and we've got a blood drive this week, March 4th, 830 to 8, excuse me, 3.30 to 8, and check with Nancy Chastine or Bill Bliven about that. Having said more than I should have, stand and greet one another at this time, please. Let us pray. Most gracious God, we come into your presence with thanksgiving and praise. We give you thanks for each person here today. We pray for the many who would like to be here today, who could not be here today because of illness. 
We ask, God, that you give us a sense of your presence that fills us with joy as we worship and glorify you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please stand for our call to worship. I hear, hear the promise of the Lord our God. I will bless you and thank you a blessing. Hear the calling of the Lord Jesus Christ.
If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us confess our sins to the Almighty God. God, our Redeemer, we confess that we are people of ashes and dust. You call us to be a blessing in the world, but we only seek our own benefit. You call us to give our lives for others, but we only seek to save ourselves. Forgive us, God of grace. Set our minds on divine things. The good news of the gospel and the promise of new life in you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. The saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance that Jesus came into the world to save sinners. He, bore, he himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we, free from sin, might live for righteousness. By his wounds we have been healed. Amen. Please pray with me. God of mercy, you promised never to break your covenant with us. In the midst of the multitude of words in our daily life, speak your eternal word to us, that we may respond to your gracious promises with faithfulness, service, and love. Amen. Our scripture today is from the Psalm, Psalm 22, verses 23 through 31. Listen to God's word for you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you offspring of Jacob, glorify him. Stand in awe of him, all you offspring of Israel. For he did not despise or abhor the affliction of the afflicted. He did not hide his face from me, but heard when I cried to him. From you comes my praise in the great congregation. My vows I will pay before those who fear him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek him shall praise the Lord. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations shall worship before him. For domination belong, I'm sorry, for dominion belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. To him, indeed, shall all who sleep in the earth bow down. Before him shall bow all who go down to the dust, and I shall live for him. Posterity will serve him. Future generations will be told about the Lord and proclaim his deliverance to a people yet unborn, saying that he has done it. The word of the Lord.
At this time, I'd like to invite our children to come forward and join me for our time for children. So watch. It's good to see all of you. So this week, there is a special day called World Day of Prayer. And I thought we could do, we will pray as we always do at the end of our time for children. But before that, we're going to use our hands to help us remember some things that we can pray for. Okay? And it's helpful because if you look over there, there's a sign that says prayer room and cry room, and right above it are two hands in prayer. So if you take your hand and hold it up, actually we're going to hold them like, that, like this, just in case, just in case we get to a certain finger where holding it up might be awkward. So this is going to help us remember how to pray. So the first finger you have in your hand is this little tiny pinky finger right here, right? And... Sometimes we use this finger to make a promise with somebody, and we do something called a pinky promise. You ever done that? So that is going to remind us that we have made promises to God to try and do what God wants us to do in the world. Perfect finger for that. Our next finger here, this is the finger that if, if you get married someday, you put a ring on it. But it's actually on your left hand when you do that. See, I'm still learning because I'm not yet married. <laughs> so, <laughs> there you go. That's why I don't have a ring yet, but come May 10th, it will happen. Anyway, this reminds us that we can pray for our family and people who love us and people we love. Then this next finger, this is why we're holding our hands upside down, this finger, if you turn up and then it's the only finger you have, it's really bad. And don't do that because it means you're pretty darn upset with somebody. So that will remind us that there are people in life who are going to upset us or make us really angry. And, but God wants us to pray for our enemies. So that's a good finger to remember. We pray for our enemies because we still have to love them. Then this finger, the index finger, is often what you point at people and say, you did this. I knew it. I am still pointing at myself with other fingers. That's clever. But this finger is going to remind us to pray that we would not judge other people. Because God doesn't judge us. And then our last finger is a thumb, which if you give thumbs up is encouragement. And so we are going to pray to support and love everybody in the world. Thumbs down does mean bad, but we're going to pray with thumbs up. So... We've got our five fingers on our hand, and we're going to put those hands up, and then we're going to put them together. We just did them. And then we're going to pray, God, thank you for my pinky and the promise to serve you for my ring finger and the gift of family. For my middle finger, I pray for all my enemies and people who are difficult. For my index finger, I pray that I would not judge but love others unconditionally. And for my thumb, I pray that I would be encouraging and have a good word for every person. For all my fingers and all that I am, I give thanks. Amen. Great job. That was a long prayer. But you are now welcome to go with Ms. Julie or stay and enjoy the rest of our service. Well, you should probably go back to your family and enjoy the rest of our service. <laughs> uh, yeah. 
you won't let me know. I guess that was an amen to proceed the sermon. <laughs> the scripture reading is from the epistle Philippians chapter 4 and significantly for our hearing today is verse 13. And I pray that this verse resonates with you. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. This morning, I want to talk about the power of I can. I have been thinking about uh, this particular idea for quite a few weeks now. The power of I can. You can recall with me when we were uh, in our days of youth and someone was trying to encourage each one of us and significantly they would always give us this metaphorical image of a little train going up the mountain. Are you there with me? Uh, if there's anybody who recalls this story, could you just say to your neighbor, smiley, I remember that. <laughs> and it was maybe a school teacher, a Sunday school teacher, a boy scout leader, a girl scout leader, and they would always give you the story of when you were at moments of difficulty and uh, circumstance in your life. When you faced the door of challenge, or a future that was unknown to you, or uncertainty. And they'd always tell you about there was the Indian and there was the caboose. But they never said that it was horizontal, which would be easier for us to go through life. But they always made it like this. You, you know that? And you, in your logical mind, you say, well, how is this Indian going to pull this caboose up this plane that's like this? You couldn't see it. But then they would say to you the language of uh, hope, and it would be, say this, I, the Indian said, I think I can. I think I can. And you stand in there as a little boy, and you say, really? <laughs> but the Indian kept going and kept saying, I think I can. And I think I can, and I think I can, and I think I can. And so you pass from the sixth grade to the seventh grade, right? With the I think you, I cans. And you go on through life with this, this hope of I think I can. Now, there's a difference between I think I can and I can do all, the language of all. All encompasses a vast sea of infinite possibilities. So that brings us to the thought today, the language of, I can do all things. If we look at this scripture in Philippians chapter 4, verse 13, the words are, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. And I think it's very imperative that we place emphasis on the I. We have to look at our own personal eyes as it relates to uh, the journey of salvation. But before I journey down my storyline, we have to contextually look at who this I was. The I in this language is Paul, the Apostle Paul, who was Saul. Now, everybody has an I because the Scripture says, He that's in you is greater than he that's in the world. God has given us a measure of faith, each one of us. 
So Paul's eye was an eye of discovery because what we were yesterday were not today. And on this journey, he was Saul, and he, then he became Paul. Now, there's a space between what he was and what he is, and that space is called a file. Uh, technologically, on computers, we have files, right? That means you can always go back and pull out what? A reference. So he was Saul, but then he became Paul. But in the journey, while you're becoming, you always become something either larger than what you were previously. I used to be in the first grade. Now I'm looking at AARP. <laughs> There's a journey. <laughs> there is a journey. But on this journey, we learn what? Many things. It's not where you've been, it's where you're going. So contextually, Paul is writing to the Philippian church. Uh, this church was uh, supporting Paul, and so Paul was trying to remind him uh, about where he has been, and he was gracious. But let's look at a little bit of where Paul had been. Now, here we have the language of I can, right, in Philippians. I can do all things. But where had he been? Well, he had gotten beaten up. He had been, what, thrown in jail. He had been shipwrecked. So the door opened, but it didn't open to those good things that we would say it opened to the plain on, what, the mountain. And he was here, but he was trying to get there. But in order to get there, he needed a grace bigger than himself. And sometimes we need a grace that's bigger than our limitation. Because our limitation will keep us bound where we are and we'll never discover who we are. If the worm decided to remain a worm, we'll never see beautiful butterflies today. Can I get an amen? amen? I guess the worm got tired of people stepping on him. And so he decided, or she decides to crawl up to a tree and incubate. And then all of a sudden, after that period of being from where they were to where they are, they begin to burst the cocoon, and then there's a beautiful butterfly. Do you know there's so much possibility in each of us, no matter where we've been? Paul's circumstance was he was beaten, he was jailed, and he was shipwrecked. Metaphorically, some of us could be shipwrecked today. Metaphorically, some of us could be beaten down by life today. Uh, some of us may be in jail, we imprison our own minds through bondage and limitation thinking. So here was Paul, uh, not only was he experienced those, he was bitten by a viper. But there was no physician around in the physical form. And so he had to only depend on the enabling grace of God to keep him in health. And so here we have Paul, and he says to them, I... You notice how I said I emphatically? Everybody got an I. An I is born from the point where you realize in your own substance that no more will I be what I used to be. But the I is born and birthed of all of your trials, your circumstances, and your situations. Uh, you can either be weak or you can be born to be strong. When I understand the image of God and I understand when God talks about I am that I am, guess what? You are the other part of that I am. Because your existence here today is predicated on the eternal creator that caused you to be in the form that you are so you can say I. You're stepping out on grace today. It's easy to step out on grace. It should be easy to step out on grace. But the eye that's in you is greater than the fear that limits you. The eye in you is greater than the context that holds you back. The eye in you is greater than your mindset. God has a blueprint for you if only you will open up the architectural plans for your life. I ought to get an amen in here. Amen. amen. <laughs> so we have Paul, this eye. How big is the eye down in you? 
How big is that eye down to you? You ever know you have plans and you want to be this and you want to be that and you want to accomplish this and you want to go here and you want to go there and then all of a sudden the Grinch who stole Christmas shows up in the middle of February <laughs> and says, who told you you can do that? I'm going to catch this Grinch one day, okay? <laughs> because this Grinch, whatever it is, it keeps us, what, locked. And God wants us to be so much more. So Paul comes to the realization that his past has been one of the building blocks that has made him. Uh, his pain has been one of the growing places where he has transitioned from fear into faith. His abandonment from friend to foe when they imprisoned him has been his joy that he found, what? A greater love in Christ. And so he says, I, everybody say, I. I. Felt good, didn't it? Yes. Now say, I again. I. Say, I, like you love Christ and watch what happens. I. I. It raised the roof off of this church because the eye is so deep down inside and it's ready to birth itself beyond the cross and the resurrection to live its life in you today. I, I ain't worried about what somebody else think about my eye. Their opinions never served me anyway well. The opinions of others never serve you well. It is only what God thinks of you that is important. I. You see how that power just builds up? I ain't trying to scare nobody, okay? But that power resonates. When you walk into your eye and Christ is at the other side of that eye, wow, can you imagine the exclamation mark that would be on the world? Oh, y'all didn't hear what I said. If you shook hands with the eye and the power of Christ in you, instead of it being I, somebody would have to come by and put a little period under the eye, they would say, wow, I didn't know you had that in you. Are y'all not hearing me today? The power of I can. Let's look at it. Give me about uh, five more hours and I'll be through. <laughs> not really. So let's look at this. He says, I can do. Look at that verb, do. Do showing what? Action. You want to turn your eye into action, but it's relative to what Christ has for you or the will and context that God has for your life. So the eye becomes what? Action. It was just not Yahshua, but it became Yahshua on the cross. Yahshua, what birthed in the resurrection. Yahshua with all power in his hand. Jesus, right? So you want to translate that eye into action. So he says, do. What is it in your life? that you can do, that can translate the love of Christ on the planet Earth. You know, I told someone, this is not a rehearsal, this is your life. I used to watch This Is My Life when I was a little boy with my auntie, and they would always show all these people. And at some point, they got something good in their life. But this is not a rehearsal, this is your life. This is your eye. God gave you this opportunity, but this opportunity is to birth something what to do. How are you going to translate that piece of language called doing into action? We always ask for the kingdom of God to come, but where is the kingdom? The kingdom is down in here. People cannot see Christ unless they see Christ in you. It's the eye that's greater in you. It's the eye that goes to the homeless shelters. It's the eye that reaches out to the poor. It's the eye that creates diversity in a world full of prejudice. You know, it bothers me when I see people talk about racism. How can it be so much racism? Because on Sunday, everybody in America, race, I mean, they, they, they worship a Palestinian Jew. Are y'all, you hear what I'm saying? We got to break out of all of these bonds that keep us, what, locked up. If we're going to imitate Christ, we need to discover the greatest eye in each of us. That little engine going up the mountain, I think I can. I think I can. I think I can. I think I can. Turn to your neighbor and say, I think I can. Try one more time. I think I can. I think I can. Now, your can, I can't define your can for you. 
God has already placed that inside of you. If it's been taken away from you, just go back and discover it. Because it's greater than your fear. You know, I seen a little note the other day, and it said, forget your age, live your life, and forget how old you are. I felt good. I put down, I did, I felt good. I put down my AARP form. When I saw that little note, it says, live your life and forget your age. Oh, I'm ready to go back to the gym, ready to walk around Cherokee Park one time. But it's the fact that what? You want to discover the great, what God put in you. You want to translate that into possibility. And how is this possibility to work itself out? Well, Paul identified an enabling grace. Sometimes you can't get there by yourself. And that's the beauty of our Father because God will what? Help you. So that's enabling grace. Because see, if it were not for that enabling grace, Paul would still be Saul. If it was not for that enabling grace, Saul would have still been what? Persecuting what? Christians. But God has a way of turning things around. Only if you what? Open up your heart. So I like this scripture and I'm going to keep resonating with it because before they put me in the ground, I want them to say at my tombstone, wow, he discovered his eye. What did he do? Not what did I do. What did we do? And did we help Ursh in the kingdom of God? Did I turn my back on somebody homeless? Did I not want people to come to live in this country because they were immigrants? Because people didn't think like I thought? Or they were of a different political persuasion? Or did I abandon love? Who is this Christ? Who is this Christ deep down on the inside of each of us? Where is this Christ in each of us? Our hearts beating with his love. Who, where, when, what, how? You hear that little fountain out there? The water's flowing. God's grace is flowing. And he says, Paul, he says to Harvey Brown Presbyterian Church, Shawnee Presbyterian Church, Presbyterian Church and others who are gathered here today, he reminds us that he says, I can do all things through Christ. Now, if he can do all things through Christ, and we are what? Also persons of Christ, born of God. We have some what? Social proof, right? You ever see somebody say, if they can do it? You ever seen somebody like that? I used to say that when I was in grade school. If they can make an A, I can make an A. But oftentimes it wasn't an A, it became out like a B or a C plus, but I tried, all right? <laughs> But if they can do it, I can do it. If he can do it, I can do it. You can do it. We all can do it. We can do all things. I like the word all. If they need help, we can all come together. If the world needs change, we can all work for change. We can all sing a song of hope, even if we sing off key. If I sing off key and you're standing next to me, just scoot over and say, he can't sing, but he's all right. <laughs> but I'm still singing. You 
can do all things through Christ who strengthens each of you. I don't know what your glory is today and I don't know what your story is. I don't know what other may have thoughts of you and how they think of you but I do know this one thing that God loves you today and allow no man or no woman take away that love that he has for you reach deep down into the recesses of your heart and let the birth of I come out like a flowing fountain and God will give you the grace to go on another day's journey And the little caboose behind the engine, don't worry about it. It's God's mountain anyway. And it's his train. He's the conductor. And I'm here to tell you today that whatever you got inside of you, let it out. Don't let nobody stop you. Christ is no longer on the cross. He's inside of you. It's the eye that wants to get out. It's the eye inside of you. Let it out today. And when it comes out, you'll sing a better song. You'll reach for somebody who's not like you. You'll open the door of possibility. And the church will sing a great new song, and it'll be called a song of love, hope, and the power of God. Now, the power of I can and the power of I can is born inside of you. I think you can. I think you can. I think you can. I think you can. I know you can. I just hope I remember that when I go down there to preach. (laughs) Right now, I don't think I can. (laughs) Thank you, Ron. Uh, One thing I want to say that I should have said during the announcements, uh, we had Presbytery here yesterday, Presbytery meeting, and uh, I want to thank all the dozens of people that helped in so many different ways. I was so proud of Harvey Brown and all the work you did. And those folks who worked feeding us in the kitchen and those folks who prepared uh, snacks for us and, and just were, you were everywhere doing everything. Thank you very much. We appreciate that. And we had our sign out front said, Welcome Shawnee Presbyterian Church. Only Shawnee got welcomed yesterday to the Presbyterian meeting. <laughs> but I assured them the rest of them were also welcome. But... But I thank all of those who worked so hard for that. We come now to our affirmation of faith. And would you join me in saying the Nicene Creed, which is in the front of your hymnals on page 34. Please stand and let's say what we believe together. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen, We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified and under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven 
and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. We are grateful for, grateful for all the ways that God has blessed us in our lives, especially that God has shared material gifts with us that we can return so that others might be blessed as well. I ask that you be generous as we receive our offering this morning. like magic, isn't it? They tell me that's a cipher, right, Tim? Y'all have any of those at home? It's something that comes and just lives in your organ, and we don't know. No, no, we, uh, they evidently just occur occasionally, and we have to fly in someone from Chicago? Where is it? It, right now, Larry says, we take anybody from anywhere right now. <laughs> we may get Joe the plumber to come in here. And... Anyway, but I apologize for that noise. We come to this table remembering what Christ has done for us, remembering that the one who is the I in us, the one who is at Christ in us, came and said, this is my body broken for you. This, he is the one who came and appeared to those disciples after the resurrection. They didn't know who he was. He was a stranger, but he broke bread. Their eyes were opened, and they realized that the one who said, I can, was sitting at the table with them. And they recognized it was the Lord, and they ran back to tell the other disciples. Sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you. 
and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is our right to give our thanks and praise. It is truly right and our greatest joy to give you thanks and praise, eternal God, our Creator. You made covenant with our ancestors Abraham and Sarah, promising to make them a great nation and a blessing to all the families of the earth. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with the heavenly choirs and with all the faithful of every time and place who forever sing to the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is one who comes For the salvation of the world, Christ underwent suffering. Call each of us to take up our cross and follow him. Offering our very lives for the sake of the gospel, great is the mystery of faith. Gracious God, pour your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these your gifts of bread and wine, that the bread we break and the cup we bless may be the communion of the body and blood of Christ. Hear now our prayers for your people and the world. Almighty God, ever present Spirit, our one true Savior, we often cry out to you that nothing in this world is certain, that life is so unpredictable with its mysteries and surprises, that our future is so uncontrollable with its constant twists and turns that you are so unknowable with your distinctiveness and ambiguities. Too often it seems as if the only truth we can count on is that we can't count on anything, but we forget. We forget that as sure as the sun rises in the morning, it will set at night, that with the winter always comes the snow and with the spring comes the flowers. We forget that just as there are times in our lives when new relationships will blossom, there will come a time when old relationships will fall apart, just as natural as a baby's first cry is a creature's last breath. We forget that you have ordered things so perfectly that our inability to know what will happen tomorrow enables us to hope and dream today. And so while every day may not be the best, we can at least rest. We can at least wait. We can hold on to the promises that you have made to us in your word, that you solidified in the sending of your only son, that you remind us of in this community, promises that you renew every morning and reinstate every night. You are the only one who can truly put our trembling hearts at rest, for you are the creator and we are simply the work of your hands. So use us, O Lord, and send us out into the world. Take us, your treasures in jars of clay that prove that all surpassing power is from you and not from us. Though we are hard pressed on every side, we are not crushed. While we are perplexed, we do not despair. We may be persecuted, but we are not abandoned. We could be struck down, but we will never be destroyed. 
We find power and hope in the fact that whether life is full of joy or sorrow, we can approach you boldly in prayer and that you bid us to come into your presence in whatever shape we are in. Remind us of your faithfulness as the promises that you have made to us in your word. When we think that we can't see your face or hear your voice, when we doubt that you are there at all, bring us back to the gift of scripture and to the knowledge that you love us so much that you would sacrifice your son so that we may be able to have life to the fullest. God, in this rare time of quiet and rest, hear the prayers of those we silently lift up to you now. And most importantly, Lord, we thank you and praise you for all the endless blessings you have bestowed upon us. We see imprints of your divine handiwork all around us, from the world we walk in to the relationships we are a part of. Your providence in all things, from little to big, continually stuns us into humble silence. Your graciousness, you have provided us a savior who not only challenges and enables us to be great, holy and righteous, but also forgives us when we are sinful and selfish. Continue to help us imitate our Lord Jesus Christ in our everyday lives and pray as he taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Jesus, on the night of his arrest, having given thanks as we have done, took bread and broke it, saying, This is my body, broken for you. Take, eat, in remembrance of me. After giving thanks and breaking the bread, our Lord took the cup and said, This is the cup of the new covenant, sealed in my blood, which is poured out for the forgiveness of sins for many. Take and drink of it. And now, my friends, we gather at this table to feast upon this bread and drink of this cup to proclaim our Lord's life, death, and resurrection until he comes again. Come, for this is the table of grace, where God's love pours out. Feast upon the one who redeems and saves, for these are the gifts of God for the people of God.
shed for you. The blood of Christ broken for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The blood of Christ broken for you, Louise. The blood of Christ shed for you. The blood of Christ broken for you, Al. The blood of Christ shed for you. The blood of Christ broken for you, Rick. The blood of Christ shed for you. Christ broke on you, Bruce. The blood of Christ shed for you. The blood of Christ broke on you, Jay. The blood of Christ shed for you. The blood of Christ broke on you, Gary. The blood of Christ shed for you. Let us pray. Loving God, you have given us a share in the one bread and the one cup and made us one with Christ. Help us to bring your salvation and joy to all the world. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. want to welcome all of you here today, especially those of you visiting with us. We're very glad to have you here, very glad to have our visitors from Shawnee, and I want them all to be back next week. I'm sorry, Ron, but <laughs> I just have to insist they're just too good for us to let you have them back. So, I want to thank Ron for being here, remind you of the reception in the living room, and I will turn it over to Ron for the benediction. I will lift up my eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper, the Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil, he shall preserve your soul. The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Amen. Amen.